Hello and welcome to another mom question and answer session. Uh, we've taken time out of our mince pie in schedule to answer those burning questions you've got this month. So uh, let's do it, shall we? So first question from Darren. Have you ever used a bass on record or live? Um, well, if you're talking specifically about morass and molasses, um, then no, I have never used a bass live or on record at all. It, um, it's not something I've ever done. It's not that something I've ever really wanted to do, I guess. It's a very different thing, Morass and Molasses, the whole baritone guitar thing. But I have played bass in the past um, in bands I've been in before, many years ago. And I've done that on records and I have done that live. So I guess that's a both a yes and a no answer, Darren. All right. Uh, this one is from Darren. What is your biggest weakness or failure? Um, obviously, absolutely nothing. I am perfect in every way. <laughs> no, seriously though, um, I would probably say overthinking things, um, like I did trying to answer this question. <laughs> um, I am always trying to make everyone in a situation happy, um, which is impossible. Um, you know, with, with things like anxiety, it's very, very easy to kind of snowball your thought process. Um, and yeah, I guess that's something I do quite a lot. Um, I'm getting better at it though, um, with help from friends and like uh, mindfulness meditation and things like that. But um, yeah, I'd probably say that was it. Um, so yeah, thank you. All right, my first question is from Darren. If I had a band mascot, or if you had a band mascot, what animal would it be and what would it be called? Now, uh, not many people know this, but we've actually got uh, uh, a mascot. He's a T-Rex and his name is Riffy. Here he is. Hello. Look him in the eye, Riffy. That's it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, through the uh, magic of editing, I'll be able to tell you a bit about him. Um, uh, we, he first came about during our tour with uh, Prophets of Saturn. Um, a few years back, the uh, name of the tour was Taurosaurus Riff. Uh, here's the picture of the poster. Now, uh, as you can see, there is a T-Rex with an electric guitar on there. Awesome, right? Um, I happened to see Riffy in a shop. Uh, my other half made him a little electric guitar, stuck it around his uh, waist or shoulders. And uh, as you can see, there's a picture of him here, uh, here at a gig, excuse me. <coughs> Uh, and then, uh, as you can see, he's not wearing that anymore. He's got uh, wizard stuff on. So, um, so our following tour was with uh, Cybernetic Witch Cult. I think the tour was, let me consult my notes. Cosmet uh, Cosmic Conquest. Uh, here's the poster. Um, and yeah, so this is him in his wizard's outfit. Uh, he doesn't really get a lot of uh, gig time in these days, do you, Riffy? No, he's a bit fragile and so on. So, uh, yeah, that's Riffy. I'll try and get him out more often, but uh, you have to be careful with him. Right, back in your cupboard, Riffy. Okay, next question. This one's from Rob. What is the strangest thing an audience member has ever shouted at you? Uh... <laughs> Well, I remember a particularly strange gig in uh, Aberdeen, uh, all the way up in Aberdeen, that's a really long drive. Um, and we were playing quite a small venue, quite packed with people. And there was a lot of heckling going on, uh, which I love if you've seen us live and a lot of back and forth. And at one point, somebody in the audience shouted at one of the hecklers. So I guess this technically wasn't at me, um, but they shouted at the audience, shut up. I paid five pound to listen to him, not listen to you. So, and that was, and that created a massive laugh, and that was quite funny. Uh, and so, I think that was one of the strangest things that somebody's ever shouted at me because it wasn't actually a heckle at me; it was a heckler, a heckler. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And um, I remember that gig in particular because there was this one particular guy that was constantly heckling me, and I remember likening him to Samwise Gamgee because of his stature. And then at a point during the uh, gig, it was such a small stage um, that I went to step backwards and there was hardly any room. And I think I trod on a bottle of beer or something like that under my foot and I slipped slightly and I almost kicked over my drink. 
and he, the same guy that I'd called Samwise, uh, jumped in and saved my beer. And I remember I just looked at him and I went, you are a hero. Which he particularly loved and everybody in the audience loved too. So that was a fun gig. I'd play there again, despite how far away it was. Rob, this, uh, this question is from Rob. Uh, what's the smallest, as in physical space, venue you've played? That is a very good question. Let me consult my notes again. Um, right, I, I had a chat with the guys a couple of days ago about this, uh, and they thought the Rock Bottom Bar in Plymouth was the smallest. Um, and I will go with that, actually. That was literally a, a cellar bar. A um, uh, <laughs> bit of an an anecdote there as well. Um, when we got there, um, obviously we carried all the stuff in down the stairs because it's a cellar. And um, we realized there wasn't a, a PA or a sound guy or anything. Um, <laughs> luckily, Bones and Raj know how to do that sort of thing. And they had to piece together like a PA with what they had in a store cupboard but just behind the stage. Uh, and they did a lot of like magical wiring and things that aren't supposed to work, but they made work and stuff and it was a it was a hard gig that was especially for them but um it was it was a good laugh because uh, the place was packed um uh, i thought of a couple there was a, a place co called the hobgoblin in in bath which is now closed that was tiny that was like a, a little room just behind the staircase um there's the griffin in bristol that's not even a square room that's a triangular room so like drummer is right at the back and then you've got to put ramps in front and then stand in front of, of the corner of the triangle. And then there's some people that can stand there. Like if you're lucky, 20 people, it's a great venue, um, but it is very, very small. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Mother's Ruin in Bristol as well. That was, we had to go up like into the attic uh, and they were like, two or three staircases so getting your gear up there was hard uh, and then when we set up it was like a tiny little room uh, and then then there was the stairs in literally in front of the stage and then there was another sort of tiny little area other side where it's sort of like the stage would be if it was on that side of the room and then there was a bit of a bit behind the uh, the stairs as well that you could sort of stand in but that was tiny too again a really good laugh great beer there too but um <laughs> it was tiny uh, but i think my my like smallest venue uh was the uh, was in bath it was the st james wine vaults um it, it was again another cellar but it was really low ceilings <laughs> they had like archways because it was a wine cellar basically converted uh so because i'm six foot five i couldn't stand near the edges of of the arch because they were so low I'd, I'd be like that up against an archway so um when we were on stage which was in the middle of one of these archways i had to stand in the middle which was in the way of raj who was right behind me and then bones had to sort of go just off stage to the right just there uh yeah that was uh again another fun gig but um man that was tiny i've i've uh, never been in such a low room ever well i probably have but not to play guitar all right another one from catty if you could be any fruit what would you be i'd probably pick a mango um because they're exotic so look at this you know uh-huh exotic they're not the easiest fruit to to consume and you know if anyone was to eat me i'd want their full undivided attention they're messy and um they taste damn good another Another question from Rob. Am I able to play anyone else's part in a song? Hmm. Uh, I can't play any of Raj's, obviously. Um, Bones's, on the other hand. Yeah, I, I can do bits and pieces, like riffs and so on. Um, and if you gave me like a week or so to learn it all, then maybe I could learn, you know, 95% of what he does. Hmm. But it just wouldn't be the same. I mean... It, with me playing it, it would sound really sort of wooden and you wouldn't get the, the bones groove in on it and stuff. Uh, and obviously, I don't have a bass tone, so it would sound really weird. But yeah, I reckon I could do that. How much is the gig? It's from Darren as well. 
if you were to play a festival abroad, which one would it be and why? Well, I'd say Europe-wise, um, I'd like to play some of the Desert Fest festivals that they uh, do in Europe. Like, I know they do one in Antwerp, and I think sometimes they do one in Athens as well. Because um, we played Desert Fest in London and it was awesome. And uh, it's just obviously our scene, our vibe. So that would be great to play those. Um, going out slightly outside our scene, uh, Hellfest in non in France, that's supposed to be really good. So I'd uh, love to play that one too. Um, it always has an amazing lineup. So it'd be awesome to play with some bands like that on it. Yeah. So Desert Fest and Hellfest, they'll be my first two choices. I think there's also another one uh, in Holland called Freak Valley Festival, but don't quote me on that. And that sounds pretty cool. I mean, Valley of Freaks, that sounds like us really. So all good. All right, Katty is asking if Moresca Molasses was a cocktail, what would it be made of? Um, so I guess cocktails have to start off with some sort of spirit. Um, only one I can think of that the three of us like is probably Jack Daniels. So we'd start off with that. Um, or maybe some ice just to keep it cold. Um, not crushed ice, has to be cubes. Um, otherwise it dilutes too quickly and we don't want to be diluting our our Jack Daniels too much. Um, so that kind of rules out any sort of mixer. No no Coke, no juice. Um, orange peel, just for a bit of sophistication. Um, and some molasses because of like, duh, you know. Um, yeah, stirred, not shaken for a bit of a twist on a stupid cliche. How about that? <laughs> All right, my next question is from Rob. If you could make a super group with artists living or dead, who would you choose? And what would the band be called? Good question. Now, I've, I've thought long and hard about this. I've got notes and stuff, right? Um, right, my only personal favorite one Okay, I would go for John Coughlin from uh, Status Quo on drums. I would do Francis Rossi and Rick Parfit on guitar and vocals from Status Quo. Uh, I'd also have Dusty Hill uh, and Billy Gibbons from uh, ZZ Top playing bass and guitar and possibly have Dusty on vocals too. Uh, and I'd call them either Status Top or ZZ Quo. <laughs> But I have to come up with another one. Uh, I think Bones and Raj would go for. Um, it would be Nick DeSalvo from Elder on lead guitar. Uh, and then it would be uh, Maynard, James Keenan on vocals and Danny Carey on drums from Tool. That would keep them happy. And then I thought on bass, it would be Bootsy Collins. And then I would put a Carla in as well. Um, he'd be like spitting vocals and truths and shit. So. Uh, yeah, I think that will keep everyone happy on the other side of the band. So, two bands. Oh, I call them Science Bitch too, just cause. All right, next question. This one's from Brendan. What's the least favourite part of touring that you secretly miss in lockdown? Uh, this is a good question. Uh, we actually talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, so, driving isn't a particularly fun part of touring because you do a lot of it you do a lot more driving than you ever do playing um, and I don't know if that's something people realize but the vast majority of touring is just sat in the seat of a, a van in our case um, but interesting side effect of all that sitting in a van is that you are it is just the three of you and you spend a lot of time together and you get to know each other really well and you chat a lot and you just you know you're like brothers really and i think that's the part i miss the most um that's why I, I don't think it's even a secret but i miss that in lockdown i miss that camaraderie i guess that you get which is effectively from one of the least favorite parts of touring but there is a camaraderie that comes with it which i really miss so yeah that's that one all right well that's all the questions cheers see you next month <laughs>